Is it doing it now? Yeah, it's recording. Yeah, just, uh, I just say, you know, I think it's written somewhere, let Lewis touch it and not, you know, just, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I love that brother. That's why I can uh, speak the way I speak about him. Cause, uh, <laughs> and if ever I say such a thing about, because I, I will zing him out to other folks, just know I just do it out of love. <laughs> anyway, good morning, family. Good morning. Welcome back again. You know, this is, this is a continuation here from uh, last week. I told you this was a series. and. Uh, Lord placed it upon my heart to do a series. Well, I didn't realize it was going to be a series. You know, this, this message was given to me uh, some several months ago, and but it was given to me, but told, but also with those instructions was told to hold it, hold it for a time. And uh, Spirit said, "This is the time." So we're continuing on. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you once again for this time just to boldly proclaim your name, just boldly proclaim the gifts that you have given us, Lord, and just speak to your people, your children, Lord. Let these words be your words, Lord, not mine. Just take everything that is of me out and just let your words just abide in me, Lord. Lord, I also ask that we just open ourselves up, Lord. Open ourselves up so we can just show who you are through our works and acts, Lord because we truly do look like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. So last week we were covering several emotions because we talked about this and uh, whether or not you are recognizing this or not, as you have studied, you should recognize that the Bible is an emotional book. The Bible truly is an emotional book. Our father had emotions. I think I said last week that, you know, look around. See if you are seeing God in others. See, do this kind of a self-evaluation, a self-check of yourself. See if you see God in you so that others may see it. Amen. You know, there's, there's so many times that we just look at things, and as the scripture said in 1 Samuel 16, 7, you know, man looks at the outward appearance. How many times do we look if someone says, well, there's so-and-so, look what he looks like, or look what he talks like, or, you know, so that's what we're getting, but we have to get away from those things and start recognizing what emotions did God give us, because he had them too. So I identified 12 of them, and as we went through last week, we covered uh, the emotions of pain and empathy, uh, sorrow and compassion. And as we move on to see some of the others, this week we'll look at, we're going to look at exhaustion, frustration, and, you know, just because I couldn't find that right picture, but, but, but disgust. You know, how many people have pets that just kind of look at you and disgust of what you what you did to them. <laughs> you know, I saw that and I thought, yeah, yeah, I, I've seen that in uh, my own animals from time to time. Because you know, they got emotions too. <laughs> they got emotions too. And then anger as well. Now these are some tough emotions here. These are some tough emotions. Sometimes people think, oh, these are negative emotions. You know, they, oh, you shouldn't show these. And But then let's think back. I'm only sharing with you what Christ showed others. I'm only sharing with you what Christ showed others. You see, the key to this is these emotions that we have here, they are powered by love. Those of you guys that get my Facebook post and some of my, my, my uh, things that I put out on Twitter and such, these are emotions that are powered by love. Go ahead and flip uh, Jacob. So you see, so when you need to keep your emotions in check, you need to ask yourself, am I coming out of love with this on my brother or my sister? Or am I just being spiteful, conniving, just downright just wrong about it? So 
we have to think about these things when we're going through and feeling these emotions because let me tell you, emotions are powerful. Emotions are powerful. If you don't keep them in check, they can make you lash out when you don't need to. Sometimes you say things that you wish you could take back, but this is not like a, it's almost like, that. I guess it's kind of like if you send that email off to someone or that text and then you go, oh, bring it back, bring it back. It's too late, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And it's going to land right where you sent it. But how did you send it? See, I don't like doing text and things like that when I really need to get something across because people don't really see the emotion behind it sometimes. Amen. They don't understand. Amen. I may be coming out of love and they take it as, oh, you're just being spiteful. You're just trying to kick me when I'm down. Mm. That's not the case. That's not the case. I try to keep everything in check for whatever I do. It comes out of love. So how are you guys self-checking yourself? It's not a question. I don't want an answer from each and every one of you. I just want you to think about it yourself. How are you guys approaching your brother and sister? You know, we get tired sometimes. We get tired sometimes. I was reading something where they were saying that, you know, how often does a, a pastor or, uh, a, you know, a faith leader or, or, or whoever that just is there all the time for folks and then, you know, they, what, what do they do to recharge? How do they recharge? And I look at Mark 6, 3. And he said to them, come aside by yourselves to a desert, deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. See, what had happened during this time, this was right after John the Baptist had his head cut off and handed. Jesus came through and... John, John the Baptist's disciples, they didn't have anywhere to turn to. Yet, Christ was right there. But he also recognized that, I know my disciples can be a little tired. I know my disciples can be a little tired. See, that's that, that empathy that you know, he has. You know, we talked about that last week. And then the compassion, you know, it just kind of goes hand in hand. So when he was saying this, he says, come aside by yourself. Sometimes we got to get by ourselves sometimes. we got to get by ourselves sometimes to just be in fellowship with Christ. You know, it just comes right down. And, and I'm going to tell you, I was, just, I, was, I was speaking with someone last week and he said, well, how, how is it that you, you know, give your sermons? And how is it that you are able to, you know, not have any type of distractions or interruptions? And, you know, how do you, the people, are they, are they feeling? And I said, you know, I don't know. Because what happens is, for me, it doesn't matter. Because what happens is, the Lord brings it down and I push it out. Mm. The Lord brings it down and I push it out. So if you're not receiving it, I just say, God, in due time, let them receive it. If it's something that is of me that I put myself in, remove it. But sometimes you've got to get by yourself. See, right now, in that, when you're in that moment, you just get, it's just you and God. It's just coming down. You and God. You ever just kind of, I told you where my prayer closet has been. My prayer closet has been out there mowing the yard. Mowing the yard. And I'm just at peace, just, just going, just at peace. And I seem to be so close at that moment. It's almost like I don't even recognize that, you know, what's going on. And I look up all of a sudden and it's all done. Let my two brothers over there tell her. They said, oh, you're done in 20 minutes. You ain't got a yard. <laughs> I tell you, those 20 minutes, though, those are some of the best 20 minutes of my day. <laughs> I tell you. See, understand this. When Christ came down, our Lord came down dressed in this, this, this human flesh, this, this coat of human flesh. So he was filling how we were feeling. And he was showing some of these emotions that we showed. How about we, you know, if you really, I just, you know, I just had to place myself in his place, showing just kind of a little empathy towards his way, how much does this human flesh weigh you down? And I'm not talking about the outward appearance. We talked about this. You know, you got a pastor that's slightly overweight. 
But I'm talking about the inside of what goes on. The inside of what goes on. How did that feel with our father? You know, he probably put that flesh on and he was like, oh. And, you know, he, he still turned to our father. Several times he called out to our father. Yeah. But he's walking around coated in this, this heaviness, this heaviness. You know, there's many times we tire, but as I shared with you, Christ pressed on. He said, let them come. He went ahead and said, let them come. I mean, can you just imagine so many people just gathering after he's already witnessed the death of someone that is just on fire for the Lord, and he was just wrongfully killed. Yet Christ said, it's okay. We're gonna, I'm going to press on. I'm going to press on. How many times do we have these projects that we need to get completed? We stay up late at night doing these projects, yet we don't seem to give the time to our Father by sharing ourselves with someone else. How does that work? How does that work? We're so concerned about getting to work on time or getting to the party on time or whatever that case, whatever that may be, even though we're tired. I'll be the first one to say, yeah, there's been times I've shut down a club or two. I've shut them down. Hmm. Two o'clock in the morning, I'm going, wow, okay, let's, let's keep going. We find time for that. We find time for that. Then you think about, what are we doing for the kingdom of God? And I'll tell you what I do. I keep pressing on. For some reason, listen to me, for some reason, I just get a renewed, energetic, peace within me to push me along. How many of you guys have got that, that, that renewness of energy in yourself that just pushes you along? I say somehow, I'm going to tell you how that somehow is. That's God right there. That's the spirit inside that just says, you're going to keep going. I got you. Powered by the spirit. Powered by love. That's what keeps me going. I pray that that keeps you going as well. I can't tell you how many times I've seen some of our brothers and sisters that are just working hard, doing things, showing up when you just think that no one else is there. I've had those times. Think, oh, no one else is here. Then all of a sudden, a brother would show up. Then another brother would show up. Then a sister would show up. And I'm like, oh, man, thank you, God. You already knew what to do. Why am I so worried about it? Let me just press on. Let me just press on. That's how it goes right there. Folks. I just love it. Love them to death. I do. You know, and if you think about tired, think about, think about this emotion also. Can you think of just Christ being tired of seeing his people just unjustly persecuted? Can you think about him just being so tired of just seeing his people? Think about John the Baptist. I mean, what was he doing? What was he truly harming? We're going to get to that in a minute because, you know, as, as much of this this life of this world that we live in, so much is powered by deceit and greed. Deceit and greed. We gotta fight back. This battle is not over, but it's already won. We just have to recognize that and we just do our parts. Yeah. You know, there's a there's an emotion of frustration that comes about. Anybody ever been frustrated? Being just truly frustrated, just ready to get your wits in. You just ah. You know, after exhaustion, sometimes comes frustration. You know, in Matthew 17, 17, Jesus answered and said, he was speaking to, his, speaking to the people and the disciples. He says, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring me, bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. And the child was cured at that very hour. See, what was going on with that child at that time was he had a bout of epilepsy. He was having seizures. And the disciples could not understand why is it that we could not remove this illness from this child. And Jesus was telling them, how long do I have to stay with you guys? I've shown you what to do. I've walked you through it. 
and yet they still didn't get it. You think our father could be a little frustrated about, right about that? Mm. Right when that was happening? As many times, you know, I say all the time, it's like, man. I even think back to the, to the Israelites when they were moving on and, you know, they had manas, you know, food from heaven, just falling there and still complaining. They're not in bondage anymore, yet still complaining. Had needs met. I'll tell you about needs. Sometimes we get our needs met, but just we want more than what we actually need. We want more than what we actually need. And then we overlook the blessings that are already right there in front of us, already provided for us. So then you think, wouldn't that frustrate you? I mean, just, just think about it for a moment. Wouldn't that frustrate you? I know that would just get under my skin. How much more can I show you? How much more? You know, we, 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 we're just hard-headed and stubborn sometimes. All these great works that are done by faith and prayer, and you know, we see it. It's happening. I see it right here. I've seen it in several of y'all's lives. It just, it, and it's just like, wow, look at it. But then sometimes we just turn around and we say, oh, thanks for that doctor. <laughs> he did it for me. Thanks for that medicine he gave me and that pharmacist to put it together. Boy, they're, they're, they're all, they're A1 with me. Oh, I was in the right place at the right time. Boy, those lot of numbers just hit today. I did it. Oh, thanks for that overtime that came in, you know. Thanks, boss. You gave me that overtime. I really needed it when it when it uh, when I when, at that moment. But then when I think back, how many times do we actually think of where it truly comes from? Because you know, recognize this that it's all just stuff. It's just stuff. But our father can get frustrated about that. We have that emotion also. You know, we see things where you think, oh, I'm doing for so much. And, for some, for some folks, and then I just don't understand why they're not getting it. You know, there's a, a sister of mine that, uh, um, I know she wouldn't mind me saying her name because she's truly a blessing. She works within the church here. You guys, only a few people have met her, but her name is Christy. She said something very profound to me one day. She said that she was out feeding homeless, and she was with another church at that time several years ago, and she said that, you know, as she was feeding, she would come back, come back, and she'd say, year after year, and she asked the pastor at that church, she said, what are we even doing here? Nothing's changing. I keep seeing the same people. They're not getting fed. And the pastor looked at her and stopped and said, so you're trying to tell God when he needs to change someone? Is that what you're doing? Sometimes we just have to sit back and wait. That's a whole other message. But sometimes we just have to sit back and wait. So he's saying, feed our people. We do that here as a church. We do that here as a church family. We do. And we're going to get into it further after this when I share the vision here in, in, in a moment here. But, you know, it's not about just feeding the physical. It's not about just feeding the physical. we got to take care of the spiritual needs also. Amen? Amen. We've got to take care of the spiritual needs. So then all of a sudden, you know, frustration tends to kind of morph into disgust. You know, that's how these, these emotions tend to work. You know, these are not easy emotions right here. You know, and the Lord just showed me how to group these together. And as I was putting this together with his, with his divine just knowledge, I'm looking at it going, wow, these are some tough emotions. And if not careful, it will eat you up from the inside if you don't recognize what it's, where it's coming from, what's powering it. Let it be of love. I'm going to continue to say this. Our sister Linda was asked a question in, in Bible study. You know, what, what emotion did he speak of? She was actually correct. I did. I said love. The reason being is because all of these have to be powered by love. If not, it will keep you up. It will destroy you. It will destroy you. You've got to release. So as we turn to discuss and This is a, it's kind of one of those, those, those subjects of mine that angers me. See, I, I don't, I tend not to get angered often, but there are certain buttons that get pushed. So bear with me as I go through this here. See, in Matthew 23, 33 uh, through 34 says, 
This is Christ speaking. He says, serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore, indeed, I send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. See, that word scourge means that when they're in their synagogues, they're going to cause affliction or confusion or calamity. We have that right now in today's church, some churches that are out there. So he was talking to the Pharisees and the, and, and the, and, and the scribes at that time, and he called them hypocrites. That's one of the things, people, that I, I do have struggles with. How is it that you can do something that you're telling me not to do, and you just seem completely content in your actions? Those things anger me. I get disgusted by it. I see in certain churches where there are individuals that will twist the word. They will take a word that is supposed to be so beautiful and they will just desecrate it. Just walk all over it. Leave tread marks all over a good word. And it's upsetting to me. It shouldn't be, yet it is. See, this is Christ speaking to them that time ago, yet still in this day and age, we still haven't learned. This is not that kind of church. This is not that kind of church. This is why when people churches come out, they say, oh, we're, you know, we're different. I pray that you are. I pray that you're different in a way that you are doing exactly what our Father told us to do. Following those 66 love letters that are written right here for us. Our guide. Pick it up. Understand. Makes you a much better person. See, those are things that, you know, truly kind of get under my skin. You know, he's, he's speaking to a generation then, yet he's still speaking to us now. As I've always said, this is the living word. It's the living word. It continues. How great is our Father to leave this for us and say, here it is, pick it up. While I'm away just for a time, I left you the Holy Spirit to guide you. And I also left you my living word. I left it for you. Yet we still do things that shouldn't be. And as I think about just that disgust that comes over us, that can quickly kind of morph right into anger. Right into anger. John 2.17 tells us that when he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers of money and overturned the tables. See, Christ was upset. Christ was upset. He's just saying, you know, look at this. You're in the temple here just defiling my name, just defiling my word. It's just ri ridiculous to know, to see. And he just he had enough. He says, well, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show them. See, but he was doing all of this out of love. See, some people think, oh, he, 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 he turned over the tables or, you know, when someone gets upset, oh, you, you, you just, you lost your mind. Well, for some, maybe. But for others, if it's out of love, no. They love you so much that they're trying to show you another side of them to get you to understand. Amen. See, that, that's, they say so, so many times, oh, Christians aren't supposed to get upset. They're not supposed to get angry. Don't be confused about my love for people and my love for my brothers and sisters that I don't get upset also. I don't know anyone in here that doesn't get upset, right? Maybe there's a few that don't get angry. Come, hold your hand up. You're lying the truth, ain't <laughs> So I love my brother. He always loves a challenge. <laughs> but I would tell you, you know, you have to be careful with anger. Again, it's just like the disgust. It's just like just the, the frustration and even exhaustion. You've got to be careful with that. You can't let it just manifest and just stay with you. You've got to release it. You've got to release it. You know, you should love everyone, but you can get angry also. You can do both. You can do both. Just watch how that anger comes out. 
Make sure you don't sin with it. Make sure you don't sin with it. You know, this, 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 just thinking about this, I mean, I, I, I tell you, you know, I, t I told you it's still happening. We have perverters of the word to this day. What was going on in the temple was things that still go on right now in our churches. It happens because of what I said before, greed. A lot of it is greed. Some of the people want to hold on to power, but that's greedy too. They want to hold on to power, but that's greedy too. Sometimes you have to just release that away from you. Get it away. There's no heavenly reason to have greed. Did our Father not say he'll supply your every need abundantly? Abundantly? I guess there's earthly reasons, but see, if there's a change in your stepping in your walk, you don't live the earthly walk, you live the heavenly. If there's a change in your step, you don't live the earthly, you start to live the heavenly because you're looking to things that are much greater. You know that God is going to provide your every need in abundance. So whatever it is right here, he's already got you. He's already got you covered. For many of us, it's in abundance. You know how you can tell? You go out and you go serve somewhere and you look around, just driving around, and you can see, I've got an abundance. I've got an abundance. I'm okay. I've got abundance of health. Things don't necessarily work right. I was in the pool doing something the other day and I recognized that I couldn't, and I still can't really without help, reach this arm to go over and touch the back of my neck, it doesn't, it doesn't move like that anymore. I thought, well, that's okay. It's a little bit of pain, but you know what? Else is, uh, I'm okay for the most part. So I'm still in abundance. I'm still living in abundance. You look at some folks and you say, well, uh, how are they, they, they're living in such a state where it's not, you know, they may not have a roof over their head. And then it's kind of like, well, I'm living in abundance. I've got my needs. My needs are met. Even a person that may have a tent still has a roof over their head. And they look at others and say, can say, I'm still living in abundance according to my needs. The Lord supplies me. So then when we look at folks and we say, oh, well, you know, you're angry at something. Usually when I'm upset about something, it's because I'm trying to get something, a message across that usually my father has given to me. Not my earthly father, my heavenly father. Because again, we're in this connection, and then it just pours right out. Down and out. If you live like this, I guarantee you, your emotions will stay in check. You might turn a table or two over. People will think, oh, we set them off. We set her off. But then, when they come back to you, and they're able to wrap their arm around you and say, I just wanted to get your attention. I just really wanted to get your attention to see, show you that there's a much better way. There is a much better way for you. Follow our Father. Follow our Father. I tell you, if it's not out of love, you need to release it and find a new approach. If it's not done out of love, you need to release it and find a new approach. As I close here, I just want to share with you that, again, this church, New Birth Christian Fellowship, this is not a church that's going to be a beacon of deceit. It's not a church that we should move others to do things that is not of Christ. This is a church where we're going to be a beacon of love and, and a beacon for the word of our Father. Everywhere we go, that's how we should walk. See, there's things that are getting ready to happen here that are some of already happening as we start to, to, to just grow. And as I share with you the vision here in just a moment, you're going to see this. You're going to see what is going on in our church right now. See, what happens right now is we look around and say, oh, it's a small church. Well, guess what? Guess where Christ started? It's a little small group of men there. There were some women there, too. Because believe me, we don't do this by ourselves. I don't stand up here by myself without without Kat just coming in and she's got my, my back just kind of pushing. I kind of, you know, hey, babe, how's this going? Oh, you're good, man. Keep going. 
I don't do it by myself. By myself. You men that have these strong women behind you as well, you know you don't do it by yourself. You don't. Christ had a, a small band of, of, of group of folks, and look how that's grown. So that's what's happening right now. We are touching so many people right now. We're going to share this with Dave. We were just a, in just a, a little bit. He and his wife, 50 years of, of service, Christian service. Man, what a time. I keep saying this, but I say it often because I really, truly believe it that when I, it is my time to get called up, I want our Father to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Well done. And just, you know, just bask in his glory right there. And all I can do is just say, Lord, thank you for giving me that opportunity. Thank you for pouring into me so I can push out to others. Thank you for that. That's going to be a glorious time right there. But in the meantime, right here, we've got a race to run. We've got a race to run. Not everybody is going to run at the same pace, but boy, we're going to run together. And for those that are thinking, oh, I'm falling behind, that's okay. We're going to have our brothers and sisters carry you on across. You ever see those racers, the, the runners that are running, and one just happens to go back and catch the other one? That's how we should be. That's how we should be. That's the type of church that we're building right here. This is the foundation right here. Covered with emotions, but we're going to share these emotions out of love with everyone else out there that are not here. Because that's what we are called to do. Amen? Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Lord, we just love you so much, Lord. Thank you for just the gifts that you have given us. Thank you for the emotions that you have given us. Thank you for the love that you have shown us, Lord. Thank you for the wisdom that you try to pour into us if we just reach out and seek. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for this time, Lord. But this is all of you, Lord. All of you, all for you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.